Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Colonization. This is post-commentary on the mission that was conducted during the live stream on January 3rd. Just a reminder, this is all in the Realism Overhaul set of mods for Kerbal Space Program. So we're operating on Earth in the real solar system. The mod list is in the video description. Now you'll notice I said mission instead of missions, despite the fact that this was a 9 hour stream. And the, the beginning of this was to try and attach an antenna on this Mars probe. And because it didn't have a long-range antenna, that was my fault for forgetting that. So all we needed to do was send an engineer over here to attach that to it. And I decided to use this vehicle, the Moon Chaser, to do it. And so the Moon Chaser will carry an antenna in its cargo bay. And we would pick up an engineer from our station, Sky Nest, and then move on over to the pair, or whatever you want to call that Mars probe. Now I haven't used Kerbal Attachment System and Kerbal Inventory System too much. That's what I'm going to use to have the engineer slap on the antenna. Uh, so I got help from viewers, but still it was going to be a tricky mission. And I added some life support here because I didn't know how long a mission it was going to be. But this is of course going to go up remote controlled with a probe core without the engineer inside. That turns out to be a mistake, but I'll tell you all about that later. So for now, no Kerbal in the cockpit and the Moon Chaser is being launched on a Falcon 9. Uh, regular Falcon 9, version 1.2 though. So upgraded thrust. Okay, here we go. And on it goes. You can see overheating markers, but that's not a problem. We see that all the time, in fact. And they're gone already. Now, Without a fairing, of course, the Moon Chaser does get a little bit of a wiggle in the rocket when it's passing through the speed of sound. You might see a little bit of that here, straying away from my intended path. But it is controllable thanks to the gimbling on the engines on the Falcon 9. And so there wasn't any problem. And we continued on our trip to Sky Nest, Sky Nest Station, if you will. Everything looking quite good. Now, I should mention that the Moon Chaser is not fully filled with fuel. In fact, it has very little of its full capacity of MMH and N204, as you can see there. That turns out to be a mistake, but um, here we go. I put in as much fuel as the Falcon 9 could take up on, on its own power. So, in other words, as much as the second stage could manage. But, in theory, the Moon Chaser could have completed its own orbit. And so we could have added more fuel, and that would have been helpful. Maybe I would have even been able to do something else during this 9 hour stream. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. So here's the second stage of the Falcon 9. Yeah, you'll note that I've extended the RCS booms on the Moon Chaser, and so it's using the RCS thrusters on those to rotate itself upright. And by the way, uh, SpaceX is supposed to be trying to land on the barge again this Sunday, January 17th, and I'll try and stream that as it happens. We'll see. Anyway, here we go. Engine cut out. All right, a little bit high on the apoapsis, but actually the station's over 400 kilometers, so it's all right. Periapsis is decently low, so we can catch up and separating off the second stage. Now, there is a controller in the second stage and we decide to try and deorbit this. It does have nitrogen thrusters and now that I've edited the real fuels configuration, those work properly. To flip it around, it takes a lot of nitrogen just to flip it around and very little control when I try and deorbit it. Uh, it's a very high thrust to weight ratio when it's on its own without any payload. And so it went all wacky, but it's definitely deorbited, so that's good. No space jump. And here we go with Moon Chaser heading over to the station. Takes a little bit of time to, uh, to get over there. Not too much Delta V. It's got 841 as you can see. The rendezvous is not too taxing. But uh, here I'm fine tuning it. I did not realize at this point how much Delta V trouble I would be in, but you'll see that soon. Basically the problem is that uh, Moon Chaser, because it's meant to re-enter, does not have any RCS ports on the bottom of it. And it's got really, really powerful RCS ports on the top of it, 
because it needs to keep that pitch up attitude when re-entering, right? But okay, well here we're trying to slow down to match speeds with Sky Nest. Still got 600 meters per second. So those powerful RCS thrusters on top guzzle up a lot of the fuel. And it turns out we really don't have enough as you can see having uh, slowed down to match speeds with Sky Nest Station and doing all this maneuvering, lots of maneuvering ahead of time and having trouble controlling it because no thrusters on the bottom, it's not really well balanced. I even turned the station so that it can help out with the orientation, but still Moon Chaser does not have the fuel. It ultimately is left with only 5 meters per second and so dead in the water. It can't approach the station like that. So I come up with a plan to separate this little module of the station to try and grab Moon Chaser. Unfortunately, uh, you might have already noticed the problem that this module was never meant to do this. It was docked using the module tug. And it's not really meant to use its own RCS thrusters to maneuver. Those thrusters were there to balance out the tug's thrusters. I didn't really think this through properly because I was desperate. And I had intended this to be a relatively quick mission. And it was turning out to be quite, quite longer than I expected. Anyway, the, this little section of the station does approach Moon Chaser but it really can't line up properly and you'll see me having some of that trouble here it's just I mean just the RCS thrusters on one side just don't allow for that prop proper alignment and here we go you can see it's down below and you can't really push up with the with those thrusters because it has to try and balance itself out with the other ones there is no reaction wheel on here Maybe that wasn't entirely clear. I try and line up with one of the other docking ports. It has six of them after all. It is a docking module for the station. But that doesn't work out very well either. So I have to come up with some sort of plan B. This is definitely not working. I need to move this away from Moon Chaser so that it's not going to bump into it at any time uh, because we are going to be within render range of these things. And then I switch to the shuttle and come up with another horrible idea and this is to use the module tug that was used to dock that portion of the station, the docking module of the station, and try and get over to Moon Chaser to do all of the business. The problem with this is, A, we seem to have a lack of co connection here. It does have antennae, but there are certain parts where we are not receiving communication, so that's a problem. B, uh, because it only has RCS ports, it doesn't have any other thrusters, any burn takes forever. And I try, I try to do this uh, burn in order to uh, boost my orbit so that we can let the rest of the craft catch up to us. Moon Chasers, the Sky Nest, and the little module that we separated from the station. But that takes too long. So I come up with yet another plan. And this is just to send up more fuel and an engineer to Moon Chaser. I have to send up an engineer because when I went to Sky Nest, I found out that I didn't have an engineer up there. They're all pilots. So I have to send up an engineer. And the rocket I decide to use, these are not Space Shuttle main engines. Well, they weren't intended to be Space Shuttle main engines. They were intended to be Raptor engines, which is the the higher grade engine from SpaceX that will take over after the Merlin. The, they have about 2,300 kilonewtons of thrust, so they're for larger capacities. So I try and build one, but it turns out that I didn't have the configuration right. I fixed that since then, but I had to use RD-192s as the base stage instead, but I still have a Raptor vacuum on the top stage. And I've added those configurations to the Space Shuttle main engines and the M1 engine for the vacuum. So this is the little pod that will carry the fuel. I put RCS thrusters all over it because I didn't want to have a repeat of the problem. And it's also pretty heavy. It's 52, uh, no, sorry, 42 tons. Uh, so I put a Kerbal inside. The Kerbal is P. Jeeper, who is one of the viewers on Twitch. And so I recruited Jeeper for this mission as an engineer and I see a problem here. For some reason the plume wasn't configured right on these RD-192s. That's my fault I think in the installation and so 
I decided to abort that and put on Space Shuttle main engines properly. So since I didn't have the right configuration for the Raptors, I just used uh, Hydrolock Space Shuttle main engines, RS-25s, and uh, reconfigured the tank for that. So here we go. Now with a Hydrolox bottom stage and then a Methalox, methane and oxygen upper stage. The upper stage is still the Raptor vacuum, 2,300 kilonewtons or so. And off we go again. Now I've, uh, since this rebuilt the, this rocket, this would be the Falcon X I suppose, uh, rebuilt it uh, with uh, the Raptor engines properly. And it has a carrying capacity of 64 tons to orbit, with the nine Raptors on the bottom and then a Raptor vacuum on the second stage. That's based on the latest available numbers of uh, the ISPs that are expected from these methane oxygen engines, as well as the 2,300 kilonewtons of thrust that they have most recently said they expect. Okay, here we go for first stage separation. Okay, and there is an, the model of the M1 modified with the configuration for the Raptor vacuum. So it is burning methane and oxygen, even though the M1 normally burns hydrogen and oxygen. And I use this model because it has the long nozzle, which is typical of vacuum engines, and especially typical of the Merlin vacuum, which has this huge nozzle on it. Okay. I had not adjusted the mass of the M1 yet though, so this is actually too heavy. I've since uh, fixed that, so... Yep, all is good with my most recent attempt to create a Falcon X, if you will. I don't know if they kind of call it Falcon X or something else if, when they use the Raptor engines. Okay, we've got the lights going on the payload. Vanity lighting. And we're getting close to cut out here. There we go, we are in orbit. Now, unfortunately, this second stage does not have the ability to deorbit itself, so we're just gonna have to leave the space junk. Now, in order to avoid delaying the launch for a whole day, I decided not to wait until my inclination was exactly in line with the station and our moon chaser, and so I had to correct it during launch. I managed to get rid of some of the difference, but not all of it, so I still had about 4.8 degrees left, and so I'm gonna have to correct that during the maneuver uh, to get close to the station. And uh, now once I jumped back to this vehicle I noticed that the cockpit had resized itself. That is because I used a bad way of sizing it to realism overhaul sizes and if you make the resized part the root part of the vehicle it decides to change back. I don't know why that is but uh, it is and so I have to always remember not to use those as the root part. Okay, anyway, here you can see it's got to cost 600 or so meters per second to get to the station because I'm correcting inclination as well. There I have the Super Dracos doing the burn, the Jeeper is in there, and everything else is a go. You can see it has like 4,700 meters per second, so 600 is not too big a deal, and that's because it's fully refueling Moon Chaser. And Moon Chaser is meant to have a lot of fuel. That is because it's meant to be able to go to the moon and get into orbit around the moon. It is also, and I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, I might have, also meant to be able to take off from the surface of Mars and get into orbit. So it's single stage to orbit off of Mars. And uh, that's an interesting point, and that's why it needs all the thrust it has with the Super Dracos. Okay, so here I am grabbing the module of Skynest, the docking module, and uh, trying to get contact with it is very difficult. We don't have that wonderful magnetism that uh, everybody relies on in stock, so here try my best to get to it. There's really, really, really no magnetism. I mean, maybe there is, but it's hard to notice it, and you can see how I'm having trouble here. There's a little discrepancy now. Uh, there, I'm gonna try and use the RCS to just push myself at it. And, um, come on, there we go. Okay, so we've got the module, and we'll tug it on over to the station. 
Of course, this was entirely wasted time. I shouldn't have used this module to try and tug Moonchaser in the first place. And, uh, yeah. Yep, I was having an off day in terms of mission planning here. But, at least we're not going to be losing any assets. This is getting back to dock with the station. And before anybody suggests it, do not suggest any docking port alignment indicator or any sort of docking help mechanism like that. I'm perfectly fine. I am using those in the Buckerman series and I'll get some more practice there. That's the Being Kerbal series. But uh, for now, I am content just eyeballing it like this. Anyway, the tough part is always trying to get the magnetism. Come on. Come on. There we go. Alright. So, next, we have to go over to Moonchaser. Still with the shrunken head cockpit. Uh, remind me of a turtle at this point. Small head out of a big body with sort of little flippers there. It's already used quite a lot of its Delta V actually and uh, so it won't be able to fully fuel Moonchaser. Uh, it seems to be having a little bit of trouble here. Well, I mean, I'm trying to turn it and catch up appropriately. I think I was probably talking to chat there and got distracted. Here's Super Dracos again. And here we go. I think it was around this point that uh, I hatched a plan, or me and chat uh, hatched a plan to to fix Moonchaser. Since I don't think I'm going to be trying to re-enter this Moonchaser, I'm not going to try and bring it back down, there's no point in not having the RCS ports on the bottom. So possibly with KAS and KIS, I can have Pjeeper the Kerbal uh, move all the RCS ports from our our delivery system there over to Moon Chaser. So that becomes a new plan. Now you might wonder at this point why why not just use the delivery system to do everything? It seems to be much better at it, and uh, why use Moon Chaser at all? And basically, I guess that's because Moon Chaser looks better. And it does have the possibility of re-entering. I haven't really tested if it's safe or not, but at least it has a chance. Uh, certainly there's no possibility of the other one. Also, and the shrunken head thing too. That definitely doesn't, uh, doesn't give me any good feelings. Anyway, here, here our Kerbal gets the drill and the wrench. Still haven't actually used the wrench, I only used the drill. Uh, and tries to take one of the dishes but that can't fit in his inventory so uh, we'll have to actually attach it to the vehicle and then sort of scoot it over I'll show you that in a little bit for now I decide to take the RCS thrusters and move those over to to Moon Chaser I have to figure out how to do that though there we go and plop and those, those our Kerbal can carry. In fact, I think he can carry, what, four of them. Four of them. So I'm going to get them four at a time, and I need eight. Uh, four on the top and four on the bottom of Moon Chaser. And then I'm going to disable the powerful thrusters, the ones that guzzle all the fuel, that are really only meant for re-entry and keeping that pitch angle right. And so you see me putting two in the front there, and then there's got to be two in the back on the bottom, and then uh, same on the top side as well. Now, the first time I did this, I did not do some of them properly, and so eventually you'll see so some of them sort of floating off, and then I have to fix that. I did eventually. Now, uh, the, I think it was Mikko helping me in chat, uh, reminded me that I could just select the container inventories and drag them directly between them. And so that's what I'm doing here, but the container on Moon Chaser couldn't fit that last panel. Didn't have enough volume there, so we had to leave the last panel in the transfer vehicle. And also it has one of the antennae on its top. It also has four thrusters in random locations and some lights, but no fuel. So it does have life support, and we're just going to leave it in orbit for now. Hopefully some use can come of it. Okay, so uh, here I go 
grabbing the wayward RCS ports that flew it away because I didn't drill them onto the body properly. Jeeper is sure getting a lot of a workout here. And again, if uh, the selection of viewer is completely random, so I just draft Twitch viewers randomly and well, they they get a workout. So trying to get that in the right place, but I don't have my drill equipped. Still getting used to KIS and KS how they are right now. Or at least how they were in 1.0.4. I have to mention that it's still 1.0.4 in Kerbal Space Program, not 1.0.5. Okay, grabbing that one. Alright, and I get those back in place. Or Pjeeper does. And... And that's the job well done. Okay, and so finally, finally, with all that done, with this refueled, uh, we can proceed on to the pair, the Mars probe that I was trying to get the antenna on. And uh, yes, nine hour stream. And so we're getting pretty close to the end of it here. And I'm quite tired, I can assure you. Looks like we only have 1800 meters per second in here right now. Actually, that's probably because the two kilonewton thrusters on Moon Chaser, which are used to sh settle down the fuel for the Super Dracos, are active, but the Super Dracos aren't. Here, the Super Dracos are active, and that's why we have 2,600 meters per second reading instead of the lesser amount, because they're more efficient than the two kilonewton thrusters. Okay, here we are sneaking up on the Mars pair. And I want to get pretty close because we have to scoot that antenna over, sort of attaching it to the vehicle along the way since the Kerbal can't actually carry the antenna in his own inventory. So here we go. Very cautiously, especially since I'm very tired at this point. Come on, EVA time. And here we go again with Kerbaling. Okay, grabbing one of the antennae, and then we'll also grab a solar panel to balance it out. But you can see I'm trying to attach the antenna onto the body of Moon Chaser, and then we would move the Kerbal bit. I can't maneuver the Kerbal while I've got the antenna thing uh, sort of uh, grabbed. And so only when I let go of the antenna can I move the Kerbal. Of course, if the Kerbal is already moving down as he is right there, he will continue to move down, and I so, sort of use that trick. So we grab there, and then we eventually get over to the Mars pair. Okay, and now we have to do the same with the antenna, but only after checking that this opens properly. There we go. So now it has communication back to Earth from Mars. Uh, the solar panel thankfully can go into the inventory of the Kerbal, it's small enough. And we get over to the pair on the opposite side to counterbalance the antenna and also provide the power for the antenna. Alright, so mission successful uh, despite all of the wayward issues in between and uh, here we have our heroic engineer. I believe the only engineer we have in space right now so a very important job for him and we'll look forward to getting that probe underway next time. It took me all this session just to get to this point. I I was all tuckered out that I needed to call it quits. So so in the most recent uh, Soul System colonization stream on the 10th, I finally got this on its trans-Mars injection and it is now on its way to Mars. Alright, so on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.